Hi folks, it's Nancy from Paper Moon Tarot, and welcome. I am finally getting around to a response to only 10 mass market decks, a VR challenge that's been going around, and I'll put information down below about the person who originated this. Um, so 10 mass market decks, that's a hard one because I have lots of mass market decks. But, um, you know, I could pick several more that would fit in this category if I could only keep 10 of them, 10 mass market decks, but uh, I picked some. So let's take a look at them and I'll try and tell you why I like these particular decks. The first one from US Games is Eight Coins Tattoo Tarot. It's, for one thing, a beautifully produced package from them. It's a beautiful color guide. One of the things I love about this guide is that you have tabs that tell you what suit you are in when you're looking for a card. It, it helps you do that. Um, and it's just a very well produced, thick, meaty book um, that I just love. They really did a good job and it's well written. Um, so that's one thing about it. Uh, you get some cards, extra cards, and these are cards that were sort of, as the creator created the cards, kind of drafts that they went through, and you'll see some final ones later, but they're just kind of interesting to see the artist process. There is also this kind of spread paper for something called the rose spread, uh, which is a really nice you know, thing to have if you want to try out this spread. It gives you the uh, the way to do it on this on this paper with these various meanings and so on. So, so that was kind of a fun bonus for a mass market deck. And um, the cardstock is nice, a little laminated feeling or waxy feeling I guess is the way I'd say it but it's a nice cardstock it's a good cardstock um, simple backs and the art is tattoo style art but it's very well done I just really like what the creator has done with this um, approach very good tarot interpretations there's our hermit really pretty card I think that lantern and the face beautifully done strength where the uh, the lion's head is on the woman's head kind of growing out of it with the lemniscate chariot I like that he's serving a block of concrete because in the RWS you can see that the the guy in the chariot is kind of stuck there. Um, I think it reflects that. Um, it needs to get in control to move forward. The lovers, the snake, the apple, the two snakes, sorry. Uh, the hanged man. So just a lot of sort of fun, creative, attractive art in a very well-made deck with very good production quality and very true to RWS meanings and symbolism. So that is, oh, there's the devil, kind of a cool devil. Um, that is the Eight Coins Tattoo deck. Here's our star. Um, remember we saw the star in development and here's the final star so that's kind of fun um, so that is the eight coins tattoo tarot and it's beautifully produced hardcover box um, in the book So there is one mass market deck that I really like. Uh, another one is one I came across early in my tarot journey, the Universal Fantasy Tarot, also a U.S. Games. No, I apologize. It's Los Scarabeo. Um, 
I was confused because the cardstock is actually pretty good. And there was a time there when Los Scarabeo cardstock was kind of like Llewellyn, and which is not a cardstock I like, although I know many people do. Um, but anyway, it is Los Scarabeo. It's the Universal Fantasy Tarot. It has just amazing art. I, I really never see it. Come on, focus. That's getting a little shiny. Um, but it's really interesting. Oh, it's a non-focusing deck and shiny. It's not super shiny. It's sort of that satiny finish, but it's just beautiful artwork. Rich colors, purples and burgundies and rusts. And, you know, it's a fantasy tarot, so you'll see fantasy figures, sculptures, larger-than-life things. There are some dragons in it. It wants to catch that little bit of light. I don't know why. Sun. So beautiful art and beautiful colors and very decent production quality on these cards. Six of Wands. Um, so anyway, it's a, it's a gorgeous deck from Los Garbeo, one I don't see very often, but you know, again, look at this. It's sort of like a, I don't know, almost Lord of the Rings style fantasy elements. Um, so that is Universal Fantasy Tarot. Uh, the art is by Paolo Martinello. Very beautiful art. That's number two. Okay. Number three, you've seen before on my channel, if you've been here before, is the Guardian Tarot by Beth Selenen. Selenen? I, I never know how to pronounce that. I apologize, Beth. Uh, it's one of my favorite decks. Got it early on. Not for everybody. It's got odd art. Um almost alien looking creatures and they're tree people. This is a deck about trees. And so she's created this world of trees. It is a shiny stock and it is a little larger than tarot sized. But it has a power, it has gorgeous colors. Seven of Wands, absolutely beautiful, I think. Now, some people are creeped out by these characters. They're like aliens. You don't really have problems with diversity in this deck because they aren't really human. Um, but I really like it. It's, you know, the, the creator talks about she created it because she was out walking with her daughter and looking at the trees and wanted to sort of do kind of homage to trees or something. <laughs> I'm probably misquoting that, but um, so they're not weird alien attackers. They are gentle tree people, and I think that's wonderful. We need to honor trees more <laughs> than we do. But it's almost almost a haunted deck to me, in a good way. Very gentle presence to the cards. And again, the colors are amazingly vibrant. And the images are sweet to me. Not to everybody, but anyway, the Guardian Tarot uh, has always been one of my favorite decks. Okay, so that's three mass market decks. Sorry. And this one is from Red Feather. Um, okay, Tarot de Luz. 
uh, is a mass market deck. You can buy it on Amazon. It is from Fournier, which is a Spanish mass market deck company. Tarot de Luz is a little smaller than your average tarot card size. It's whimsical. The cardstock is decent cardstock, a little, again, kind of waxy in feel. Not, not terribly shiny. Um, a little gloss to it. Not matte, for sure, but um, try and get it to focus a little better. But the uh, the feel of it, the color palette, the the whimsical nature of it, and the just kind of fun. It's original art, and not everything we look at in tarot decks is original art versus digital art, which is original art. Okay, but hand drawn art <laughs> or collage, um, it's hand drawn art. So that's something that's fun to get occasionally. Four of Wands, Three of Swords is, I, I love a Three of Swords that doesn't have swords through a heart. So that sold me immediately on this one. It's almost like there's volcanoes going off, that there are swords threatening this unicorn-like creature, which makes sense. It's mythical. It's being phased out in some way, some myth. I always think the Three of Swords is like something you believed in or thought you find out isn't the case, and that's what the Three of Swords is. You have to change your mind because it's a mental thing with swords. So saying that you realize that mythological creature is gone is kind of that meaning to me. So anyway, this is the Terra de Luz. Three of Cups is a heart. That's interesting. But yeah, very interesting interpretations of the cards, not just Rider Waite Smith. Nine of Swords has a sun in it. Oh no. Three of Pentacles. Like there's a journey to be made up that hill. So. Terra de Luz is another mass market deck. I will list these all down below with their creators and probably a link where you can get them since they're mass market. Uh, if you're interested in any of these, Terra de Luz. Okay, another mass market deck that I really like is the Shadowland Tarot by Monica Brodersky. Uh, it's, again, a huge box. Um, good production quality. <laughs> Even here you have a little smiley creature. It's supposed to be about um, shadow work. But I, I suppose because it's kind of, oh, again, whimsical, amusing art, it feels like you could approach dangerous subjects like shadow work with it. The guidebook is exceptional. It's a really good guidebook. Um, reflections, questions to ask yourself, and the message and keywords. But um, it just, it's really well written. It has some really good things to explore in it. Um, obviously spreads. Most of the guidebooks have those. Some Something about, back here about numerology. So it's a very well written guidebook interpretation of the cards and so on. So, uh, great guidebook. Uh, it is a matte card stock in one of these boxes that at least it doesn't slide under the cardboard. It doesn't have a ribbon or anything like that. Um, but that's okay. Uh, this is pretty much standard tarot size and it's matte, which is nice and it's borderless, which I like in most decks, not all. And it's just got some fun stuff going on. The other thing I like about this is nice big print. You can, and that, you know, isn't always the case. 
and it helps me as well as maybe some people who are vision challenged. I just have tired eyes, not bad eyes. <laughs> but there's our three of pentacles. Seven of Pentacles. The Hermit is a ghost, of course. There's just strange creatures in here, strange settings, fun art, but it's, it's right on. It really works very well with the traditional card readings. And, you know, I, I heard a lot of people talking about really enjoying using this deck. And I do too. So, if you don't have it, definitely check it out. Fun deck, the Shadowlands Hero, Gilded. I don't care too much about it about gilding. I prefer it if it's sort of matte gilding rather than shiny gilding. Or just a white edge to a deck is nice too for me. Um, but anyway, the Shadowland is, is definitely one of my favorite mass market decks. Okay, moving on. Um, Phantasmatero is a great deck. It's one of the first by Paulina Fay, who's also known as Paulina Cassidy. Come on, focus. Okay. Um, it's one of the first ones I found that is borderless. And because her art is so busy, in a good way, I mean, it's, it's got a lot going on, it's nice to have it. the images be larger and borderless. A little bit shiny. Um, I believe U.S. Games, uh, decent cardstock. Um, doesn't want to tell me what it is, but I believe it's U.S. Games. Um, and it's a fantasy deck. You know, she has some wonderful images. The flying teacups, I love. Two of swords. She has not only two swords to choose from, but two animals here, like sort of, I don't know what they are, <laughs> antelopes, antelope. Okay, come on, we're going to focus, there we are. You have to focus with these cards because they're so intricate, so much is going on. Beautiful wheel of life with two rabbits running around it. Queen of Pentacles, lots of animals. Not a ton of people in here. Some. Look at the detail in that artwork. It's really nice. And the color palette is very pleasing. So that is the Phantasma Tarot by Paulina Fay. And it's a favorite because it's uh, it's just got wonderful, fun art that has so much detail to pour into. Um, I also like that this is relatively clear to read the titles because you might take a second to have to figure out which card this is from the fantastical creatures in it. Um, but yeah, it's US Games and it's a sturdy box with thumb poles. And that's the Phantasma Tarot. Okay. Um, next one. We're almost there. Next one is the Zillich Tarot. It's a tarot in a tin by Christine Zillich. Again, U.S. Games. And it's one I got early on. It's actually a cloth-based deck um, that I am still not conversant with Thoth. But these are the backs. Um, but the artwork in this is just so pretty. And I'm kind of all about the artwork in decks. And you've seen a variety of decks that here that are fun decks like the Eight Coins Tattoo uh, and 
the Universal Tarot, the Guardian. Um, this is a little, a step up in terms of the artwork. It's uh, really pretty. Not just for fun, but it's beautiful. And you'll you note the keywords down below are Thoth style keywords. And again, very nice, clear font. Sans serif font, which I totally approve of. The sun, beautiful colors, beautiful artwork. And it's a tarot and a tin. It's not very expensive. You know, US Games cardstock, so it's decent cardstock to my mind. A little bit shiny, but not overly. But just the, the artwork and the colors in this really, really appeal to me. And I think if I if I wanted to sit down and study Thoth, I might want to use this deck. I know it's probably not a straight line to Alistair Crowley, but one doesn't want to focus at all. <laughs> oh, I like the moon in this almost like the woman is wearing a moon hat and there's the crustacean creeping about. So that is the Zillich Tarot. Again, not very expensive. Comes in a tin from US Games. Really pretty artwork. Like the one on the tin, which may be the Queen of Cups. I'm not sure. Maybe the Empress. I forget. But Pretty watercolor style art. Okay, three left, and these three are all more historical decks. One is the Terra Noir. Uh, maybe you, some people think this is a mass, uh, sorry, an indie deck. It's not. It's a mass market deck that you get from like Amazon France. It's a French deck. Comes with a pretty pouch. Um, I would give every deck I have <laughs> if the creator of this would come up with a tarot size matte version of this deck, but I don't think they're listening, so. Um, it's got the most, it's a Marseille style deck with wonderful, you know, the people have wonderful faces, the colors are absolutely gorgeous in this. going to have to focus this differently because it's such there's such large cards and they're shiny cards but look at the expression on this guy's face the the use of uh, the way that fabrics are depicted here the the folds of fabrics is absolutely amazing um, again Marseille style deck so you're going to have these that style of pip I don't know what these creatures are leading the chariot. I don't know. But they're fabulous. Fantastical. There's our high hierophant, sorry. A court card. And the Page of Wands. Now, it is a French deck, so you're going to have titles in French, Chevalier de Beton, um, King of Pentacles or Cups, I'm sorry, Pentacles or Coins, can't talk, Knight of Swords, Cavalier de Paix. I shouldn't try more French because it's not really one I'm good at. World card, but the faces on the characters, the colors, it's just a, a wonderful deck. Fantastic. And there's Le Jugement. Look at the angel's face. So anyway, Le Terre Noir is an absolutely gorgeous deck. Um, it's it's good production quality. It's 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 almost like a U.S. Games cardstock. 
Um, nothing to write home about, but it has a good guidebook, but it's in French. <laughs> so for this one, you again, I'll have links down below, but you have to probably go to uh, a French, you know, book depository or Amazon link. Okay, next to last, Terra de Maria Celia by Leonard Jim Narciso. And this is another Tarot in a Tin, another US Games. And it is just one of my absolute favorite Marseille style decks. The white book. The colors in this are incredible. Again, you've got characters with kind of funky, fun faces. It's again US games, decent cardstock, pretty backs. But look at the colors in this the purples and the rusts and the greens. It's the devil who looks like a little baby devil. And then, of course, the pips are Marseille style pips. I, I love the size of this because I have small hands, so smaller decks appeal to me. Um, the colors, and it's very pretty. Yeah. Again, that slight sheen. And I actually prefer matte decks, but as far as mass market decks, it's harder to find matte, I think, or has been in the past. It's probably getting easier. Look at that Wheel of Fortune. So much fun. So that is the Tarot de Maria Celia. Put that book back in it, pack it up, and get back to the last deck. And this one's cheating a little bit because it is a, a Los Carabeo deck. It is mass market, therefore, you can or could have bought it on Amazon, but it is a limited edition. Uh, and it's part of their Anima Antigua editions, and they are wonderful. I just went to look this up on Amazon to make sure it was still available. It was available from some seller for like $348. I think I bought it for $35. So whether it's worth that or things have just gotten crazy inflated, I don't know. But I recommend these Anima Antigua editions. They're, they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, pop off top on the deck. The cardstock is really beautiful, almost art, art card. Beautiful backs. Beautiful reproduction quality. Again, a tiny deck. It fits very handily in my hand there. Um, the Tarocco Soprofino is the Soprofino being fine art. So it was an historic deck, but one that was much more uh, finessed in terms of art than early Marseille style decks that have those sort of primary color, more rudimentary figures. Um, but just beautiful quality, beautiful cardstock. Uh, beautiful size for me, for my money, <laughs> uh, and again, an historic style deck that is one of my favorites to pull out just because of the size and the cardstock quality, and, um, and it, it's beautiful. I mean, it's got beautiful detailed artwork, if I can make it focus. There we go. Um, so that is the Taroko Soprofino in the Los Carabeo Anima Antigua edition, which again is um, the Anima Antigua decks are available on places like Amazon, but they are limited editions. So if you like this style, if you're interested, 
go check it out, see what they've got available. They do have several. In fact, I kind of noticed that they have several new ones coming out uh, this spring of 2023. So check those out. So those are some mass market decks, 10 of them that I really love. And um, hopefully you like them too. Here's my little piece of citrine for whatever citrine is for. You can tell me in the comments below. But uh, So let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite decks are and which one of these you, you might like. And as I say, I'll put links down below for where you can purchase most of these and um, who their creators were and that kind of thing. So take care and thanks for visiting. Bye.